praise you for your presence. We praise you for your angels that come around about us. God, I thank you for your word that comes and ministers to us. Thank you for health and our being, oh Lord. And thank you for all of your graciousness and our finances, Lord. Oh God, thank you for favor. God, I just praise you for all that you are. Thank you that you have loved us before the foundation of the world. God, we give our hearts over to you. We ask you, Lord, take our lives and hold us out to you. Father, make us what you need in these last days. God, help us to be a witness. Help us to be a good testimony for you. God, let your grace always abound in our lives. Lord, we thank you. We begin to praise you now, God. We lift up your name in the earth. For you're worthy to be praised. We give you glory, my Father. We ask you to take this service, make it what you would have it to be, that you may minister into our lives. God, you're aware of who's going to be here today. You have prepared the right word for this day. God, we just thank you for it. We pray that we may be submitted and useful tools in your hands in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
our lives, oh God. Help us to stay out of the way so that you can do your work within us. And you can elevate the babies as you see them, God. We just invite you to have full control of our lives, my Father. We thank you for your many blessings. God, we pause now to give unto your cause. We pray that whatever is given today, God, it would prosper the kingdom of heaven. Lord, bless it with your work that you may be glorified in the earth. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. We invite you, if you haven't given online or so, come forward and give an offering today. We thank you for your faithfulness and your blessings. This time we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll dismiss our kids to kids' church. And we'll let them go back there and have some fun today, and we'll have some fun in here. Amen. 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 We got somebody in this room. There we go. There is a room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, I want to, um, and I'll make this announcement again, but I want to read this this morning. Um, just a few things. We are wanting to do a vacation Bible school in the month of June. Um, we have the opportunity to do VBS this summer. And uh, the VBS will be the week of June 14th from 6 to 8 p.m. VBS will be for the children 12 to uh, 2. Yeah, ages 12 to 2. Uh, ages 2 to 12. Um, but in order to finalize that uh, detail um, and uh, regarding the VBS, we need to get some input from the parents. Um, and of course, we've got some people that are on vacation today and they're just traveling, so I wanted to go ahead and put this out there so everybody can see it on the video. Um, but we have a form here uh, when all the parents get back with the kids and teenagers and all that stuff um, that uh, we'd like to find out do you want to have this? Do we want to do this VBS this summer? Um, and if so, then we would get you guys to, uh, to say yes or say no. And then we also are going to do the option of doing it three nights or five nights. The plan will be to do it from 6 to 8 p.m., either three nights or five nights. And we're going to let the parents decide on that and, um, and, and choose what they would like to do. So I wanted to put that out there and make sure that I made that announcement this morning um, so that when everybody either watches live now or they go back and watch it later, that will be on there. Uh, we will talk about it more uh, this coming Wednesday night. Um, it was good to be back in the sanctuary this past Wednesday night. Um, I know it was a little bit challenging, and uh, you know my kids are not used to being in the sanctuary on Wednesday night, so uh, poor Allison was having a ring on, but they finally settled in. Um, but we will be back in the sanctuary on Wednesday night, 7 p.m. I want to invite everybody out, everyone come. Uh, we, uh, not only that, not only do we have our services in here on Wednesday nights now, but the keepers of the command, our youth group, um, will be kicking things off this Wednesday night um, at 7 p.m. as well in the Fellas Hall, and Alicia is uh, heading that up, as well as we're going to be working on having uh, some things for the, uh, the young children and the youth as well. Um, we've got some stuff in the works there with, uh, with, uh, with Carmen, who right now, she is our, um, our children's pastor, as well as Mandy. Um, they are working together to get the children's ministry rocking and rolling. And we've got some exciting things that are coming for, uh, for the kids. We even have a name. And, um, and I'm not going to make that announcement this Sunday. I'm going to wait and hold on to that. And I'm actually going to let, uh, I'm going to have Carmen get up here with me next Sunday. And uh, since she's in the back right now, she won't know this till later. Uh, I'm going to, I heard her come to the door there. Um, but we will, we will make that announcement next, uh, next Sunday. And then April 27th for the ladies. Uh, Women of the Well, Nora, is the women's ministry pastor, or leader, uh, whatever we want to call her, president, all of the above. Uh, you guys will be meeting here April 27th at 7 p.m. Uh, for the first gathering together for the Women of the Well. 
Uh, Nora is super excited about that. She had to work today, uh, and we're praying for that, that the Lord would bless her and uh, give her her Sundays back so that she can be here with us. Yeah. But I'm excited for you guys to have that have that going and uh, get that on the ground. And uh, men, we're going to be working on something for us, too, because if the ladies get together and have fun, then, then we need to be able to gather and have fun and, and do our thing, too. So I'm thinking food will probably involve with the men. I think that's, you know, we just have to have food. Um, but uh, I'm so glad you guys are here today, and I, I kind of want to share my heart a little bit uh, this morning before I get into my message. Um, uh, a very good friend of mine passed away this week, um, and it was a um, very untimely death. I was not expected. Um, I'm not going to go into great detail. Um, I would ask that you pray for the Byron family, for Lisa and Gary Sr. Uh, they lost their son this week, Gary Jr., um, and um, not only that, they've also lost their daughter, Stephanie, uh, years back as well. So they've lost both of the children. Um, and my heart breaks for them. Um, and it really, uh, it kind of, I guess it kind of hit pretty close to home. And it kind of put some things into perspective. Um, and, and I kind of want to move this in with my message today. But I want everybody to know, and I know there's not, you know, our, our normal group is not here this morning, and that's okay. Um, but if you see this, I want everyone to know if you're struggling with something, if you're battling something, if you are stuck in an addiction, if you are down, if you are depressed, if you are, have anxiety, if you are just whatever it is, I want you to know that there are people in this church that you can reach out to. There's people in this church that you can come to, and there's people in this church that love you and care for you and will do everything we can to help you. Amen. Okay? I know we can't save everybody. My heart's desire is to, like, save everybody from everything they struggle with, everything they deal with, every every addiction, whatever it is. My, my, my heart is to save everybody. But I know that we, we can't do that. That's not how God made us. That's why he made more of us. And so the Lord has given us a an area of operation here within this church and within this community. And I want you guys to know that we're here for you. Um, I know that I have a very busy schedule and, and life has gotten even busier and it's fixing to get even more busy with two more on the way and, and um, you know, added to our group. But I want you guys to know that we are here for you guys. Yeah. Um, I don't care what you're going through. I don't care. If, I, I've had people call me in the middle of the night. Um, I love Ed and Renee. I miss them so much and pray that, that God would, would bring them back here soon when yeah. he retires. But they called me in the middle of the night one time, and Renee was literally going into labor. And I drove 45 minutes to Washington Road all the way out here to, uh, to Blythe, and I uh, came to stay with her kids. So um, we're here for you guys, and, uh, and I want you guys to know that. But I want you to know, hear me, don't ever struggle with what you're struggling with without help. Amen. Ever. That's right. I don't have to know all the details of everything. You don't have to tell me anything, but if you're struggling, call me, text me, email me. I'll get back as fast as I can. I'll do the best I can to be there for you guys because I don't ever want anyone to go through some of the things that, that some dear friends of mine are going through this week. Um, and so I wanted to share that with you. Um, but if you've got your Bibles this morning, literally the Lord all week long, I was like, oh, what do you want me to preach on? What do you want me to speak on? What do you want me to teach on? Nothing. 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 All week long. All week long. I asked and talked and prayed. And I was like, Lord, flip through my Bible. I'm like, okay, where do you want me to go this morning? And it wasn't until about 6.30 this morning that the Lord gave me this message, and it really reverberates against what I saw yesterday at this funeral. And so if you have your Bibles with you this morning, turn with me to Luke chapter 15, verses 12 through 32. That's Luke chapter 15, verses 12 through 32. When you get there, say amen, and then stand with me for the reading of the word. Amen. Amen. I know that you guys have heard the story of the prodigal son, but I wanted to speak on that this morning because there's some things that I want to talk about this morning in this message that I think that we as the body of Christ, as believers, as helpers in the kingdom need to, need to hear. Luke chapter 15 verse 12 says, and the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. 
But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine, and he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came, when, but when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and spare and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore the father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I have never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, he who was devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost in his family. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, I pray right now for the, the prodigal sons and daughters that are out there that are lost today. I pray, God, for the son, the prodigal sons and the prodigal daughters that are dealing with drug addiction and alcohol addiction, for those that are, that are caught up in the things of the world, for those that, are, that feel like they are just trapped by the enemy. I pray for those prodigal sons and those prodigal daughters, Lord, that, that are fighting against you, Lord. Yeah. That they would be, that they would receive your love, that they would receive your glory, that they, they would receive your mercy, God. I pray, Lord, that you would show them that you are a father standing on the hill, waiting on the return of your prodigal sons and daughters. Yes. And I pray this morning, God, against this sickness that is addiction. All the addictions that the enemy has brought into this world, the things that our, our society is trying to make okay in the eyes of people, the things that the society of, our, of today is trying to push upon the people, God. And I pray, Lord, that we would have an opening of our eyes, that we would have a great awakening, that we would have revival, Lord. And that you, God, would stand us up and let us be like the, the, the spiritual fathers, Lord, to receive these prodigal sons and these prodigal daughters in this church and into this body so that we can help them, God, to walk straight, to get on the, the right path, God, and to turn from their wicked ways so that you can heal them, God. I pray this morning, God, that you would stir up a fire within us, oh God, that we would want to save the lost souls of this world, that we would run to those that are in need, and that we would stand our ground on the word of God, and that we would look beyond anything they've ever done, and that we would be a celebration in the moment that they walk back into your glory, God. And God, I praise you this morning. I thank you. I give you honor and glory. And the church said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you, Father. I mean, you guys do listen to me. Y'all are standing up. I said, Be seated. I'm going to try that next time. I'm going to see how long I can go without saying, Be seated. And, uh, and we'll, we'll see that. I also like, oh, God. Praise the Lord. Let's talk about this story just a little bit here. We have this story that Jesus was, uh, was, was, was talking about. And he was referencing this, this father and the two sons. 
And what I find to be so relevant is how many of you have siblings? Anybody have siblings? Anybody ever have some siblings that you just want to? Yesterday was National Sibling Day, I think, something like that. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, and I forgot to post on Facebook something that's terrible. But sometimes you've got those siblings that, that all they want is more, 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 more. They want more, they want more, they want more. They, what they have is not good enough, or, or what they've been given is not good enough. And, 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 and for some of us, I mean, there, there's, there's been times that I've been guilty of it, and I've been, I haven't been happy with what I've had, and I've wanted more, and, and asked for more, and begged for more, and pleaded for more, and, and bargained for more, and all that. But you see, there's something in this story that really sticks out to me. And there's so many different ways that the story can be preached and taught and shared and, and, and opened up. And, and what I want to focus on today is I want to focus first on the son that decided he knew what was best for him. And that he needed the things of the world to be happy and satisfied. But then I also want to focus at the end of this sermon today. I'm going to do the best I can to keep it together. At the end of this, I want to focus on how the brother felt when the son returned. And I will show you how you've got two different portions of the church in this story. You see, at the beginning of the story, the son went to the father and he said, you know what? I've done things your way for a long time now. I know, Dad, that you're a rich man. You've got a lot of land. You've got a lot of goods. You've got a lot of cattle. You have all this. And so now I think it's time for me to just take what is mine. It's time for me to claim my inheritance from you, even though you have not passed away. Now, typically, you don't receive an inheritance from someone until they have passed on. But this son decided that he was going to do what was, what was best for his flesh. He was going to do what he felt like would please him. And so he went to his father, and he made a petition to his father. No, actually, he just said, give it to me. He didn't make a petition and say, Dad, I'd like to have this. No, he said, no, the time is now, Father, for you to give me what I am owed. The son felt like he was owed something from his father. And because his father loved him as he did, he didn't dispute with him. He didn't argue with him. But I believe that he was going to teach him a lesson through this. And I had never seen the lesson that the father was trying to teach the son until I read through this story this morning. The father could have said, no, son, I'm not going to give you the things that you're asking for. No, son, I'm not going to give you the inheritance that is half of yours and then the half for your brother. I'm not going to divide that up because you are not ready for this yet. You're not worthy of this yet. And since I have not passed on yet, it does not belong to you. But the father did what he felt was best in his eyes. And in this story, Jesus talks about this parable, and, and, and what the father was doing here was he decided that he was going to let the son learn a very hard lesson. How many of us parents in here have ever let our kids learn a hard lesson before? Anybody ever told your kids, don't do that, it's not going to end well for you, but then they do it anyways, and you just let them do it so they can gain that experience? This is what is going on in this story at the beginning of this. Even though the father said, okay, fine, I'll divide up this inheritance. I'll go ahead and split this down the middle, and I'll give you your portion over here, and I'll give the portion to your brother over here, and you can take your portion, and you can do whatever you choose to do with it. He was teaching him a lesson. He was preparing him for a return. That father knew, a good father knows this, and that father knew that when the son would depart and he would leave, that there would be a day that he would come back because he knew that he was not ready for the world yet. Let me tell you this. There are so many things in the world. Anybody ever enjoyed the spoils of the world? I have. Yeah, there's so many things out there that the world can offer us. There's so many things out there that the world can give us. But I'll tell you this. When you eat of the food of the world and you drink of the drink of the world, you will be hungry and you will thirst again. But my Bible tells me that those who will drink from the Lord, they'll never be thirsty again. Those that will eat from the, from the Lord will never be hungry again. And you see, what was happening here was, is the flesh of this young man was overthrowing the spirit within him. The reason I believe that his spirit was in tune and connected with God is because there's a moment where he has an encounter where he realizes that he has walked away from what he was supposed to do. He walked away from the father. There are people today that are prodigal sons and there are prodigal daughters 
that are thinking that they know what's best for them. They're wanting all the things that the world can give them. And they're walking away from the Father. Not just our mother and our father here on earth. I've got a father. His name is Butch. My mother's name is Alicia. I departed from my family because my word told me that it was time for me to go. And it was time for me to take a wife and to forsake all others and then go and do our own thing. But what we see in this story here, what we're experiencing in this story here, is we're not experiencing a young man who is leaving because the word of God is commanding him to or because the word of God is calling him to. But rather he's leaving his home because the world is pulling at his flesh. The world is telling him, the enemy, the devil, is telling him, it's time to go. Get your stuff. You can make it. And I don't know, I don't know how many of you have ever seen this, this video on YouTube, but there is a little cartoon about this story. And I remember watching that cartoon several times with the kids. And you know, the, the, I wish the uh, I wish the veggie tales would do it because I like the cucumber and the pea and the tomato and all that kind of stuff. They're real cool. But in this video, this this young son, this prodigal son in the works, he goes out into the world and he has all this money. Now, how many of you know you can have, people can give you money, but if you don't do something to have money coming in regularly, you will run out, right? Everybody knows you've got to work a job or you're going to run out of money, okay? So what we what in this in this little this cartoon video in the story, this son, he went into a town, he had all this money, he saw this robe, and he thought, man, that's a really nice robe, I gotta have that, so he went bought it. Then he saw this, uh, I believe it was a donkey. He saw this donkey, he's like, man, I gotta have it. But then he saw this horse, and he's like, oh man, I gotta have this horse. And, and, and I've got to go in this place right here because this is the best restaurant in town, and I've got to have the, the finest meal that there is, and he bought it. And not only that, but now I need someone, I need somewhere to lay my head and I need some, I need people to take care of me. So he went and rented a room, the most extravagant room in the town at the time. And he had people in there fanning him, feeding him grapes and so on and so forth. And he had this in this in this cartoon, he had this little bag of money. Okay? He had this bag, this little sack of money. And so every time somebody would come in and do something for him, he would reach into that bag and he would give them money. He would pay them for their services. The son was looking to the things of the world to satisfy his flesh when he should have been looking to the things of the word to satisfy his spirit. There are people today, there are people right now that are dying and going to hell because they're looking to the world to satisfy the flesh instead of looking to the word of God to satisfy the spirit. Now, I can't stand up here and tell you what it's like to have a drug addiction. I can't stand up here and tell you what it's like to have an addiction to alcohol. I cannot tell you what it's like to have these kind of addictions because I've never walked in those shoes. But I can tell you this. If the church doesn't wake up and have, this, have an awakening to where we lead people to the cross and we lead people to feed themselves and seek the word to be satisfied spiritually, the devil is going to keep leading them out into the world and tell them that this is how you're going to be happy. If you just do this right here, you'll be happy. Oh, I'll take care of you. Oh, I'll watch over you. Oh, you're fine. Don't, don't worry about that. You can do this. You can go steal. You can go kill. You can go you know, tear stuff up. You can, you can take stuff from other people. Oh, you're fine. Because you're happy. You see, the problem today is the church has moved into a position as a whole, and this is just my opinion on this and my thoughts on this, we would rather come in here and sing two, three songs and get our worship done in about 10 minutes. We want to hear a watered down version of the word of God that makes us feel good. And yet we want God to give us what we feel like we're owed. Let me say that again. We want to come in here and we want to have 10. I'm saying this. Unless the Holy Spirit's moving, you won't catch me leading 10 minute worship sessions. That's not what I'm about. I don't care. I'll stand up here and sing all day long until the cows come home if the Spirit is moving. 
I will stand up here and I will preach. There is a reason that there are only, there's only one clock in this church. And that clock doesn't work because it hides a hole. But there is a reason that I don't have clocks in this church. Because I don't care when the Spirit of the Lord is moving. I'm not on a time frame and I'm not on some time clock. I've got to watch over it so that I can see my heart rate and so that I can see how many steps I take in the day and what time it is. But here's the problem. Because the church has decided to just get over here and lay down and not speak and teach the word of God, there are prodigal sons and there's prodigal daughters that instead of running to the altars, they're running out the doors of the church because they're going to find something that will satisfy a need because God is no longer enough because he's not taught in the church anymore. God help us, Lord. Yes. But this son had gathered all this stuff. Now I'm not saying that it's not okay to have stuff. I have stuff. Just come look at my tool bench. Just come look at my, I'm trying to catch up with this man over here. I'm getting there. I'm, 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 I'm chasing him. And then Anthony put me on the tractor last week and that, that just made it worse because now I'm on one of those. I'm not saying that you can't have stuff. And I'm going to make an illustration here. Can we read? Word of God. This. What about substitute this? I love this. I'm emotionally attached to this. There's a lot of significance and a lot of meaning and a lot of love in this guitar. Because of who bought it for me, who gave it to me, and the anointing that God has placed upon it. I love my guitar. You can see that my little box is falling out, but this baby has held together and we still rock it. But this cannot substitute this. My shoes are comfortable, but they can't substitute the word of God. My clothes are nice and they're comfortable, but it cannot substitute the word of God. What happened to the prodigal son was the enemy got in his mind and told him it's okay to substitute the things that you really need for the things that will satisfy you in the flesh. I love going to a buffet, but guess what? Two or three hours later, I'm hungry again. I can go to Izumi today and I can tear up some sushi and get some hibachi and I can lay it down. But in two or three hours, I'm going to be hungry again. But what the church in America is doing now is they're feeding meals that tell the people that, guess what? You can eat from this today. You'll feel good for a minute, but you're going to be hungry later. Instead of teaching and feeding meals to the people that are coming straight out of the word of God and that will feed them and that will keep them satisfied and keep them healthy and keep them in relationship with God. This prodigal son, he got a relationship with the world and he walked away from what the father could provide for him. This kid didn't have to go anywhere. His dad was going to take care of him. Our father in heaven will take care of us if we don't walk away from him. How do we not walk away from him? The church and the believers and the body of Christ has got to tell the people who God is. We have got to tell people who God is. We have got to tell people that when you have been in the miry muck and the miry clay and you've just been a complete disaster of life, that God will reach down and he won't just touch the bottom of your feet, but he will pick up the ground beneath you and he will raise you up. He will stand you up. He will put you back in right standing. He will get you back in the place that you were called to be. Because we are sons and daughters of the King of the Most High. And if we aren't teaching people that, oh God, I feel the Lord today. If we don't teach people that, then they will not know who their identity in the Word of God and Christ is. Because the world will tell them that you are sorry and you're no good and you're a drug addict, and you're a whore, and you're a harlot, and you're all this, the world will begin to put labels on people. And that's exactly what happened here. The enemy labeled this guy as a wanderer and a walter. And the word of God says that I am not any of that, but I am a son of the king of the most high. 
and, and just feel like they're above everybody. I want people that are hungry for God. I want people that want to live a life of holiness because of Jesus. And I want people that will embrace and will hug whoever comes in here. I know COVID is going on and some don't hug and some do. But bless God, Jesus is standing at the door out there. And he's watching and waiting to see if the body of Christ, if the bride that is us, is going to open the door for those that are lost and dying and going to hell. I watched a dear friend of mine in a casket yesterday, and it broke my heart. I watched his mother and his father cry. I watched his mother and father with the sadness and the pain and the hurt. But what God showed me was that he was going to bring peace to them, but there were other souls in that building that were hurting. There was other souls that were living for the world, and he was waiting on them to return to him. Every one of us in this building today encounters people. Every one of us. Some of us are in leadership positions. Some of us are, people, are, are in positions that people look to us to make a difference. Some of us here today, people look to us to be a spiritual beacon and a guiding light to help them move back into a relationship that I they, they have either never had and are trying to find what's missing in their heart or be they've been a prodigal son or daughter and they have said God you give me what I deserve you give me what my inheritance is and you let me go and you let me do this on my own there is an influence if you guys don't believe it turn the news on for two minutes and you will see the deception of the enemy working in our nation or you can just look at the, the politicians that are out there on every side of it we need people in the body of Christ to stand strong on the word of God so that when these prodigal sons and these prodigal daughters have this breaking point, anybody ever been to a breaking point in your life? Yeah. I've been there. Sometimes you need to get to a breaking point so that you'll do one of two things. You'll either continue to stay in the mess that you've made or you'll finally say, I've had enough. I'm coming home. I've had enough. I'm coming home. And that's exactly what this son did. He said, I've had enough. He said, here I am. I'm living in the, the, the pig pen. I'm eating the same slop that the pigs are eating. But yet, my father's servants at home have bread and water more than I do. I can't do this no more. I will not do this anymore. And I will humble myself. And I will go back to my father. And I'll ask him to have no more than a servant's life. But here's the great part about this. And I ain't got to the brother yet, so y'all hang with me. Oh my God, I feel the Lord today. The best part about the moment when the son decided to return, the father would never allow him to be a servant in his house because he was his son. Amen. I want you to know that God is not looking for servants to serve in his house. God is looking for sons and daughters to return so that he can put a ring on their finger, so that he can put the most heavenly of heavenly robes on their back, so that he can wash their feet, and so that he can put new shoes on their feet, and so that he can walk them into the room of celebration, and he's got a feast prepared before them, and he says, look, here's the best seat in the house. This seat belongs to me, but I want you to have this seat today. That's the kind of Father in heaven that we serve. And there's people out there that need to know that. And if we don't take it from in here to out there, they're not going to know what they're missing out on when they come back home to God. Amen. We have got to put up our flags. We have got to raise our beacons. We've got to raise our spiritual spotlights so that the lost prodigal sons and daughters can see their way home. Amen. That son knew that it was going to be a long journey to get back home. I remember when we lived in Cotsview, we walked everywhere. I loved walking. Now, not so much. But I loved walking. It was my way of life. It's how we got everywhere that we went. And this son, not only had he wandered a good ways away from his home, but now he was going to have to make that return. And here's something I want you to see. When the prodigal sons and daughters that are out here in the world today when they have their breaking point moment and they flip and they turn away from the world that they have been trapped in, they're going to have a journey back to the Father. On that journey, 
The enemy is going to do everything he can to keep them from getting back to the Father. Here's why I get so mad when churches don't welcome the lost in with open arms. They've already walked through a journey of hell to get just back to the doors of the church. Why will you stop them? I can't stand that. I can't stand that. I, I, can't, I can't do that. Y'all will see me lose my stuff. I'll flip. I will lose my mind. And the thing that I love about this church and I love about these people, every one of you, I don't have to worry about that. Because every one of us in here has had broken moments just like me. Yeah. Everybody in here has had moments just like this part of the son did. Everybody in here is seeking after God, is seeking for more from God. We're seeking for deeper relationship with God, and we don't care. I don't care what you wear here. How many times have y'all seen me in a, in a sports coat and a tie? Mandy, probably 10 in three and a half years. Probably 10 times, three and a half years. I don't care. The father didn't care how wrong the son was. He didn't care what he did. He didn't care how far he wandered away. He didn't care how far he got away. He didn't care how far he strayed away. He didn't care about what he said about him. He didn't care about what he did. He didn't care about what he took from him. He didn't care about none of that. The father was happy to see the son on the horizon. The father was waiting for that son to get back. And when that son returned, there was a celebration. They had a party. They had a potluck. Praise the Lord. Biblical. They gathered together for a feast. He called in all the servants. They got together. And now I want to talk about the brother that didn't leave. The other brother was loyal. He was faithful to the father. He never transgressed against the father. He never went against the father. He didn't take anything from the father. His inheritance had been divided, but it was still there. He didn't touch it. He didn't take it because he stayed there with the father because he was loyal to the father. Here's the problem with this. Don't let your loyalty get tainted with a pharisaical mindset. Don't let your loyalty to God be corrupted because you feel like you're holier than someone. That's right. Don't let your loyalty to God be overshadowed by your flesh. The Bible says not by our own understanding, but by His understanding. There's a reason that the Apostle Paul wrote the letter to the church at Rome and said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, to be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what is that good and acceptable will. There's a reason Paul wrote that letter. That letter is still relevant today in the 21st century and the year of 2021 in the church today because the mindset of the brother has overtaken a lot of the mindset of the church. There are Christians that are sitting on pews today and they're sitting in chairs or they're standing or whatever they're doing that their name is on the pew. They have sat in that pew. That is their pew. That is their little holy ground and no one is welcome in that. There are Christians today that they don't want the prodigal sons and daughters to come back because they feel like that they have their chance. They have their opportunity. And because this has stayed loyal, these, these, these ones, these Christians that have been loyal to God, they don't think those that have walked away from God should have a place at the table. They don't think that those people should have a place in the church. This other brother didn't feel like he had been given just cause and had not received that that the brother wanted. And he felt like that because he had stayed loyal to the father, that his brother should not have been allowed to come back. He didn't understand why 
the dad wanted to have a celebration. He couldn't understand why the father was celebrating. And he didn't even have the nerve to go to the father to ask. He had to go to a servant. So he went and found a gossip answer. I can't imagine that ever happening in the church. Amen? But this other brother was disappointed. He was mad. He was frustrated. And he said, but, but, but I've been loyal to my dad. And you've never done this for me. Let me tell you this. Can y'all see anything behind my pulpit? Can't, can you? Something <coughs> behind here that you can't see. You might not ever see everything that God does for you. But just because you can't see it doesn't mean that God isn't doing something for you. That father did something for both of his boys. He granted the request of the first son that wanted it all so that he could run and go do his own thing. He granted that request for the son that stayed. He didn't have to grant him anything, but he went ahead and he divided up his inheritance and he made sure, here it is, son. But what he did for that son that stayed, even though he had a, 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 a just a pitiful attitude and a sour attitude, he provided food for him. He provided covering for him. He provided clothing for him. He provided, a, a, he had him a job. He worked. He did work the land. That father gave everything he had to both of his sons. And this is the part that, that I don't understand it in the church today. If the father, both sons were wrong. Both of them. The first son was wrong for asking for the inheritance. He was breaking tradition. Now, in the, in, 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 there was tradition here. You didn't ask for your inheritance before the person had passed. You waited. The first son broke tradition by asking for what was his, what he deemed he was owed. The second son had a Pharisee from mindset that the first son should not have been celebrated on his return. God celebrated both the sons. When the prodigal son and the prodigal daughter walks in the doors of a church with all their baggage behind them, with everything that they've done wrong, the reason they have that baggage is because the world tells them that that's your baggage that belongs to you. And they drag this baggage in. And this baggage is doing nothing but slowing them down because it's heavy. And when you take your eyes off of where you're going in front of you, you automatically slow down. That's just, that's, that's just, that's, that's a fact. <clears throat> so when these sons and daughters are, are dragging these bags in of, of stuff that the world has put on them, where's the believers in Christ to take the bag away from them? Where are they? Where's the church that says, leave your bags right here, you don't need those. Where's the pastors that will get in the trenches with these people that are struggling with everything and say, leave your, leave your bags. If you've got a burden, I'm carrying for you. Where's that at in the 21st century today? Where did it go? Did it, did it disappear? Did, like, did it, did it disappear in the word of God? It didn't. It's still there. And it broke my heart yesterday to know that two people that I love very much in this world, but never get to hug their son again.
But dad told me yesterday that he had just finally gotten in the last few years to a place where he could talk about losing his daughter. And now he's lost his son. Here's my question. You know, the story doesn't say exactly how old this, this son was, either one of them. And I want you to know, and I'm going to close with this. God doesn't put an age on the product of a son or the product of a daughter. You can be five or 95. And all in between. And I think about the fact that and I hope and I pray that before Gary passed from this world that he made things right with God. I don't know. I don't know. Because we never talked about that. But I believe I believe that in situations like that that our father stands on the hill with his arms wide open calling his sons and his daughters home. <clears throat> I believe that after yesterday. I can see this story playing out yesterday. And the return may not have been to his earthly mother or father. There's always a return to the heavenly father. And that's where we as the church, as the body of Christ, as believers, as people who have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, according to what this word tells us. Because we have made that choice, we have got to be the arms and the hands and the feet of the Father. Amen? Would you stand with me this morning? Lord, we praise you today, we thank you today, we give you honor, we give you glory today. God, I pray for every prodigal son and prodigal daughter right now that hasn't turned yet, that is walking back, and that has made it back. I pray, God, that there would be a celebration of those that have returned to you. I pray that there would be celebrations all over this, this world in the body of Christ when lost souls join with them. I pray this morning that you would bless those who are here. I pray this morning that you would lift them up and strengthen them. I pray that, Lord, you would give us the strength to reach these lost souls, to set people on the right path with your word, and to lead them to, their, to a place of salvation. And God, I love you this morning so much. I thank you for my wife, my, my children. Thank you for this church family, this church body, every single person, God. Every one of them. And Lord, I just ask today that your spirit would bring, bring peace on this land. Yes. Bring peace to our nation. Bring peace to the prodigal sons and daughters that are lost right now. Lord, I love you this morning. I praise you. I give you honor and glory. And the church said amen. 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 Church, I love you guys. Love you. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Don't forget, Wednesday night, 7 p.m., church here. Invite everybody you want to. Come and join us on Wednesday night, 7 p.m. We will have something for the children. Uh, we will also have something for the youth. Um, and...
that is all for that. You can end that. And then I have one other thing I need. If y'all have a few minutes, I need a few extra, a few hands from the gentleman.